Module four. In the news. Four A. News stories. Exercise three B, page thirty six. News twenty four. The bare necessities. A woman from Vancouver, Canada, came home from work one day. To find herself in the middle of a real-life nursery rhyme, Paula Green is now called Goldilocks by her friends after finding a hungry bear in her kitchen. The two-year-old brown bear was eating Paula's porridge, so she quickly went into the next room and called for help. Eventually, the baby bear finished his meal and ran off into the forest. Luckily, there was no sign of a daddy or mummy bear. Scorpion in a bunch of grapes. A deadly scorpion found on a kitchen table caused panic for a family in Wales. Michelle Smith, forty-two, thinks the scorpion came into her house inside a bag of grapes she bought at the supermarket. While the rest of the family were hiding. Mrs. Smith's husband bravely caught the beast. Real life lassie saves boy's life. A dog was called a hero after he came to the rescue of his eight-year-old owner, just like in the film Lassie. James Thomas broke his leg when he fell into a river. Realizing he was badly hurt, he called his dog Buddy. Who amazingly pulled him to safety? James was recovering in hospital yesterday, but can't wait to get home and say thank you to Buddy. News text alert: Sport. A player for a Lincolnshire football team broke a record when he scored 16 goals in a match yesterday. I was just playing my best for the team, he said. 4B. Did you hear about? Exercise two A, page thirty eight. Good evening, Mr. Shah. I'm from the Hong Kong Herald. Can you tell me what happened to you in your taxi today? Well, it was about four o'clock in the afternoon, and I was driving home. Go on. When suddenly something flew down from the sky, and hit my car, I was surprised. Wow! What was it? A huge turtle. That's unbelievable. I know. I stopped the car and got out. The turtle was lying on the ground, and two people were running towards it. They looked very worried. Who were the people? The turtle's owners. It seems that the turtle was crawling on the balcony of their tenth-floor apartment when it fell off onto my car. Oh dear, that's terrible! So how was the turtle and your car? Well, the turtle was fine, but my car was badly damaged. How do you feel now, Mr. Shaw? Well, I'm still a bit shocked. I'm not surprised. What a story, Mr. Shaw! Thank you for sharing it with us. Four C, take action. Exercise one A, page forty. A group of students came up with the idea of making a school club to help save the environment. Tanya Brunton, Alicia Morton, Gina Montgomery. Clive Forsyth, Jim O'Sullivan, and Carl Johnson created the Nature Madness Club and won the award for the best student work. At first, their club only had thirty members, but word soon got around that Nature Madness was fun, and less than a month later, they had over three hundred students. Now, they are thinking of asking for the help of students from other schools. 
Nature Madness members took part in lots of after school activities. They took classes to find out about pollution, recycling, and conservation. The whole team helped to make the classes more interesting by using pictures and videos and so on. After that, the members organized different events and activities, such as recycling or clean up days, planting trees, and helping stray animals. The mayor gave each student a gold medal for their good work. Their teacher, Barbara McAlpine, said at the ceremony, I'm extremely proud of my students. They proved that you don't have to wait until you're grown up to do important things. Exercise 3A, page 40. And Rovers fans are celebrating all over the country tonight after their team won the national championship for the third time, beating the Reds three goals to one. And the atmosphere here is amazing. The band hasn't come on stage yet, but you can feel the excitement in the air. Thousands of fans are here and, like me, they're expecting to see a fantastic show. Now, the lights are going down. Claudia is wearing a delightful pink summer dress. It's a typical Stefano creation, but it looks like this year's collection is going to be a big success. The audience love it and the photographers are taking thousands of pictures. Now, here's Kate in an elegant two-piece suit. The locals here at New Bay are not happy. Thousands of people have gathered in the town square, just in front of the mayor's offices, to express their anger at the mayor's decision to close down the town swimming pool. 4D. Culture Corner. Exercise 3, page 41. British Teenage Magazines. About half of British young people aged 12 to 16 read teenage magazines. Two of the most popular magazines for girls are Sugar and Bliss. They have glossy, colourful covers and include beauty and fashion, celebrity gossip, real-life stories, horoscopes, quizzes, and problem pages. Of course, boys don't usually find these magazines very interesting. Instead, they buy music magazines like NME or magazines about sport like Shoot or Match. Usually, teenage magazines contain a lot of language that only teenagers use. They might use celeb instead of celebrity, for example or fave instead of favourite. They also say lads instead of boys, dosh instead of money, and natter instead of talk to your friends. This makes the magazines more attractive to teenagers and easier to understand. On a more serious note though, a lot of these magazines can help teens find solutions to problems they don't feel comfortable discussing with their parents. That's why the problem pages in these magazines are very popular. In fact, Many teens buy them just for the problem page. How about you? What do you like most in magazines? English in Use 4 Exercise 2, page 42 Can't we watch the news? Do you fancy watching it? Oh no, I hate reality shows. Oh no, not that. Well, I suppose so. Do you want to watch that new reality show? Shall we watch that too? 
Sure, I really like documentaries. Actually, I'd rather watch the other channel. Exercise 3A, page 42. Hey Sam, do you want to watch that new reality show? Oh no, Becky. I hate reality shows. Can't we watch the news? I suppose so. What channel is it on? Channel 1. Julie, there's a documentary about dolphins on TV. Do you fancy watching it? Sure, Pete. I really like documentaries. There's a sports program on after. Shall we watch that too? Actually, I'd rather watch Channel One. Why? What's on? EastEnders, my favourite soap opera. Oh no, not that. Exercise six, page forty-two. Reading rules: A, A I, plus R, plus vowel. Air, Mary, Harry, Belly. Harry, fairy, marry, lad, ferry, barely, dairy. Extensive reading for across the curriculum, media studies, exercise two A, page forty three. Turn on and tune in. Lots of universities in Great Britain have their own radio station. Students who are studying media courses or hope to work in the radio industry usually run the stations. The radio stations entertain the students by playing all the latest music and chart hits. They also review bands, films, and new CDs, among other things. On a more serious note, the radio station informs the students about all the news on campus and in the local area. A radio station needs several people to run smoothly. Firstly, there's a DJ who presents the show and plays the music. There is a journalist. Who writes and then reads the news? A technician or engineer is always nearby in case the equipment breaks down. Lastly, the producer organizes everything and controls the show. Working for the radio station is good for the students involved. They gain useful practical experience that may help them find a job in the future. If you want to find out more about student radio, go to www.radiofeeds.co.uk/other. You can even listen to the stations online.